In the vast universe, where every planet, star, and space anomaly is carefully cataloged and regulated by the Galactic Council, some places are strictly off-limits. Known as no-go zones, these areas are filled with dangers so extreme that even the most advanced alien species dare not venture near. These zones contain cosmic threats, gravity wells, intense radiation storms, and magnetic anomalies powerful enough to tear ships apart. And yet, while most civilizations tremble at the thought of entering these forbidden areas, there's one species who sees these warnings not as a deterrent, but as an invitation. Humans. Bold, curious, and a little too fearless for their own good. Captain Riley and her crew have heard the Council's warnings. They know about the dangers, and of course, they ignore them. Armed with only basic supplies, an unbreakable sense of curiosity, and a bag of snacks, they set out to explore the uncharted zone, determined to see what secrets the universe has hidden from everyone else. For the Galactic Council and the alien scientists watching from afar, this mission is unimaginable. How could any species be so reckless? Yet, as they monitor the human's journey, they're about to discover that humans don't just survive the impossible, they thrive in it. The Galactic Council's observation deck was quiet, almost reverent, as the news broke. Humans, those so-called death-worlders, had entered the Forbidden Zone. High Chief Analyst Xylox hovered over the data screens, his tendrils twitching with a mix of horror and fascination. The no-go zone was no ordinary area, it was a cosmic graveyard. A swirling vortex of hazardous phenomena, off-limits to all intelligent life. For most species, just the thought of setting foot, or equivalent appendage, there would be unthinkable. Yet here were humans, boldly venturing where no other species dared. The aliens on the deck exchanged worried glances, their complex communication buzzing with questions and disbelief. The humans' lack of protective equipment, their small, modest ship, and their apparent lack of concern were utterly baffling to the Council scientists. Did these humans not understand the dangers? Or were they simply insane? As they monitored the human crew's progress, the aliens recalled all they'd heard about Earth. Death World, they called it. A hostile, chaotic place where natural disasters, aggressive wildlife, and volatile weather were the norm. And yet humans had evolved there, thrived there even. They'd heard tales of human resilience, their ability to withstand pain, extreme conditions, and unimaginable hardship. But this? This was on an entirely new level. Why would they go in there willingly? A young researcher, Kryla, asked, her voice trembling. It defies all logic. Xylox shook his head, still transfixed by the data feed. Perhaps to them this is just another Tuesday. The room fell silent as the humans approached the first wave of radiation storms. In their logical minds, the aliens anticipated that this would be the end of the human mission. Surely, no species could pass through such a treacherous region unscathed. Yet, even as they watched, the humans powered through, laughing, joking, and even pausing to sip from their strange liquid containers. Coffee, if the records were correct. The longer the aliens watched, the more their confusion deepened. How could a species be so calm in the face of what would terrify any other civilization? Back on Earth, humans had a saying, where there's a will, there's a way. And here, deep in the treacherous darkness of space, the aliens were beginning to understand that humans didn't just survive. They carved paths where none existed. As the human ship maneuvered deeper into the no-go zone, alien scientists across the observation deck were glued to their screens. The humans, it seemed, had a plan, though it was one that defied every standard of safety protocol the Galactic Council held dear. On board the human vessel, Captain Riley was enjoying her coffee, watching the incoming radiation alerts on her display with mild curiosity. The rest of her crew were similarly unfazed, running through a checklist that looked laughably basic to the aliens monitoring their progress. Instead of complex calculations and meticulous precautions, Riley's crew seemed to rely on a mix of intuition, experience, and what the aliens could only describe as reckless bravery. Inside the observation deck, Kryla's mandibles clacked in confusion. Captain, they're approaching a Class Seven radiation surge. Shouldn't they be preparing shields or initiating evasive protocols? Xylox stared at the screen, equally perplexed. 
The humans weren't engaging any of the safety measures that alien crews would consider standard in such a high-risk zone. Instead, Captain Riley looked over to her engineer, nodded once, and, this part baffled them all, took another sip of coffee. As if they hadn't just initiated their approach to the most dangerous area in the galaxy, Riley's voice crackled across her crew's communications. All right, folks, time to show this zone what humans are made of, just like we practiced. Don't think too hard, and remember, intuition over instruction. The aliens observing this exchange were horrified. Intuition over instruction? To them, survival meant following rigid protocols, advanced planning, and calculating every risk down to the smallest variable. Yet, here were the humans, operating with a confidence that bordered on reckless. Xylox glanced at his junior colleague, clearly trying to understand what he was seeing. Do they not realize what they're up against? Kryla whispered. The human ship moved forward, adjusting course with a speed and fluidity that seemed more art than science. The aliens could see that they weren't analyzing every hazard as the Council would have advised. Instead, Riley's crew relied on quick thinking and adaptability. They rerouted power here, made manual adjustments there, and somehow moved seamlessly through the radiation field, seeming to dodge each danger with uncanny precision. Kryla leaned closer, her eyes wide with amazement and a hint of dread. It's like they're dancing with disaster. Humans, Xylox muttered are far stranger than we ever imagined. As they continued watching, the observation deck filled with murmurs of astonishment, admiration, and in some cases, outright fear. Every alien watching knew that by their own calculations, the humans should have been overwhelmed by the dangers of the no-go zone. Yet there they were, laughing, improvising, and somehow thriving in a place that had claimed countless other explorers. It was at that moment that Xylox made an observation that would haunt the Galactic Council for ages. Perhaps humans don't just survive danger, maybe they need it to thrive. The human crew continued their journey through the no-go zone, encountering cosmic hazards that had thwarted even the bravest alien explorers. But unlike those before them, Captain Riley and her team seemed almost energized by each new obstacle, approaching every danger as a challenge to be overcome rather than avoided and to the shock of their alien observers, they seemed to thrive in the very chaos that would terrify most. Halfway through the zone, however, things took a turn. Alarms sounded aboard the human ship as an unexpected gravitational anomaly tugged at their vessel, dragging it toward a rogue black hole lurking on the zone's outer edge. This was no ordinary phenomenon. The gravitational forces were strong enough to tear ships apart atom by atom, the alien scientists observing from the Council's deck were on the edge of panic. Surely they must realize they need to retreat, Xylox muttered, his gaze locked onto the data feed. Their ship can't withstand those forces. It's suicide. But to his horror, Riley and her crew had a different approach. The humans held their ground, refusing to turn back. With calm precision, they initiated manual adjustments, stabilizing the ship's course. Riley turned to her crew, grinning. All right, folks, looks like we're in a bit of a squeeze. Who's got an idea? One of the crew members, an engineer named Sam, raised a hand. We could release some of our outer hull plating, lighten the load, boost thrust, and maybe get enough momentum to slingshot around it. The idea was met with enthusiastic nods. To the aliens watching, however, this was madness. Hull plating was critical, a last line of defense against the unknown. Removing it was nothing short of reckless. Are they dismantling their own ship? Kryla gasped. Xylox's tendrils twitched in disbelief. They are, he murmured, almost as if in a trance. They're actually improvising. The human crew sprang into action, detaching parts of the outer hull, making manual calculations, and recalibrating thrust vectors by instinct rather than strict protocols. Every move they made seemed counterintuitive to the aliens yet somehow it was working. Bit by bit, the human ship picked up speed, edging closer to a trajectory that would allow them to slingshot out of the gravitational pull. Meanwhile, on the Council's observation deck, the aliens were in uproar. This was the kind of chaotic, haphazard approach they had always feared. The idea of abandoning rigid control and embracing such uncertainty went against everything they had been taught. 
At last, with a final jolt, the human ship rocketed free from the black hole's grasp, hurtling back into stable space. On board, the humans cheered, exchanging high fives and grins. Captain Riley took a long sip of her coffee, her face a picture of calm. Back on the observation deck, Kryla and Zylok stared at the screens in stunned silence. To their amazement, the human ship had not only escaped, but had done so with a kind of fearless precision they had never witnessed before. Slowly, Xylox began to understand that humans didn't approach survival like other species. To them, survival wasn't just about avoiding risks, it was about pushing through them. It's... it's as if they live for this, Krilla whispered, barely able to believe what she'd just seen. Xylox nodded. For humans, risk isn't an enemy, it's part of the journey. As the data streamed in, the alien scientists exchanged uncertain looks. Every calculation told them the humans should not have survived, and yet here they were, preparing to dive even deeper into the no-go zone, where even greater dangers and unexpected revelations awaited. The human crew's triumph over the gravitational anomaly sent shockwaves through the Galactic Council's observation deck. Alien scientists and analysts watched in silent astonishment as Captain Riley and her crew continued their journey, pushing further into the no-go zone. For the aliens, this display of human resilience was more than impressive. It was unsettling. Every aspect of human behavior seemed to challenge the Council's understanding of survival, logic, and even existence itself. In a quiet corner of the deck, Xylox was lost in thought, processing what he had just witnessed. All his life, he'd been taught that survival meant control, precision, and obedience to protocol. But these humans, these death-worlders, seemed to live by an entirely different philosophy. To them, survival was about confronting the unknown with open arms, even if it meant risking everything. The very idea shook him to his core. Beside him, Kryla was equally disturbed, her mind racing as she tried to reconcile what she knew with what she had just seen. I thought I understood what it meant to be resilient, she whispered almost to herself. But humans, they redefine it. Xylox turned to her, his voice filled with a strange mix of admiration and trepidation. For us, survival is about maintaining order, minimizing risk, ensuring that every variable is accounted for. But humans, they walk willingly into chaos, as if it's just another part of their existence. Krilla glanced back at the screen, where Captain Riley was laughing with her crew, her face unmarked by the ordeal they'd just endured. Is it possible that humans don't see danger the way we do? she asked. To them, is it not something to be avoided but embraced? A murmur rippled through the observation deck as more alien scientists gathered, drawn by the unusual display. They shared hushed conversations, grappling with questions they'd never considered before. If humans could face such dangers with calm determination, did it mean the Council's approach to survival was flawed? Were they too cautious, too rigid in their quest for security? Xylox felt a shiver run down his spine. The implications were profound. If humans could accomplish so much with so little preparation, then maybe, just maybe, the Council's deeply ingrained fear of the unknown was more limiting than protective. One of the senior analysts, who had been listening nearby, turned to Xylox and Krilla. Perhaps humans have evolved in ways we can't fully comprehend. They're not just resilient, they seem to thrive on chaos, on unpredictability. Their adaptability is, he paused, struggling to find the right word, limitless. The silence that followed was heavy, each alien wrestling with the same question. What did it mean to be truly resilient? Were humans in their reckless courage closer to understanding survival than the Council had ever been? Meanwhile, back on the human ship, Captain Riley and her crew were unaware of the existential crisis they had triggered among the Council's scientists. For them, this journey was business as usual, just another day pushing boundaries and defying expectations. As the human ship ventured further into the no-go zone, the aliens on the observation deck were left with a sense of awe and unease. Their carefully constructed worldview was beginning to unravel, challenged by a species that didn't just adapt to danger, they seemed to thrive in it. And for the first time, the Galactic Council found itself questioning whether humanity's chaotic resilience was, in some strange way, 
a higher form of survival. Maybe, Zylox whispered to himself, we've been looking at survival all wrong. The human crew continued deeper into the no-go zone, encountering threats that grew more unpredictable with every mile. Massive ion storms crackled through space. Disorienting magnetic fields shifted erratically, and sudden bursts of high-energy radiation spiked dangerously close to their ship. But Captain Riley and her team pressed forward, undeterred, adjusting and recalibrating on the fly. Then came the final test. Without warning, the ship's sensors blared as they picked up on an anomaly far greater than anything they'd encountered, a colossal wave of spatial distortion rippling across their path. It was as if space itself was collapsing, folding in on itself, and anything caught in its wake would be torn apart. On the observation deck, the alien scientists erupted in panic. There's no way they can survive that, an analyst shouted. Even with their reckless strategies, this, this is beyond survival. But instead of retreating, Captain Riley issued a command that would once again shock their alien observers. All right, team, she said calmly, her eyes focused on the data streaming across her display. Let's ride the wave. Her crew sprang into action. They adjusted thrusters, rerouted energy, and began preparing the ship to surf the spatial distortion, using its momentum to carry them through instead of fighting against it. To the aliens watching, it was a strategy bordering on insanity. Xylox was speechless. They're, they're embracing the anomaly. This is madness. Krilla clutched the edges of her console, unable to tear her gaze from the screen. Or genius, she whispered, her voice filled with a mixture of fear and admiration. They're adapting to the impossible in real time. As the distortion wave surged toward them, the human crew made their final adjustments. Captain Riley took a deep breath, her voice steady as she addressed her team. Hold on, everyone, and remember, this is just another bump in the road. With that, the ship plunged into the heart of the anomaly, the distortion twisting around them. The ship groaned under the strain, lights flickered, and for a moment, the entire vessel seemed to vibrate with a force that could tear it apart. But the crew held fast, using split-second adjustments and pure intuition to stabilize their course. They were flying blind, trusting their instincts and each other to make it through. Every alien in the observation deck held their breath, certain they were about to witness a disaster. But then, against all logic, the human ship emerged on the other side of the distortion wave, battered but intact. A stunned silence settled over the alien scientists. What they had just witnessed defied every rule of survival they had ever known. The humans hadn't just survived. They had transformed a fatal threat into an opportunity, something no other species could have even imagined attempting. Before anyone could fully process what had happened, another alert sounded. A secondary anomaly had been triggered, likely a result of the distortion wave's collapse, and it was fast approaching the human ship from behind. To make matters worse, it was drawing the surrounding debris into a gravitational whirlpool that threatened to pull the human ship into its center. Captain Riley quickly assessed the situation, her mind racing. All right, everyone, here's the plan, she said, her tone as calm as ever. We'll detach the outer ring of our thrusters and use it as a counterweight. It'll give us just enough force to slingshot out of here. We'll only have one shot at this. Once again, her crew responded without hesitation. They manually detached the thrusters, realigning them to create a gravitational pull against the whirlpool. It was an insane last-ditch effort. If even one calculation was off, they'd be caught in the vortex with no chance of escape. As the thrusters activated, the ship lurched forward, accelerating out of the vortex's pull. For a heart-stopping moment, they teetered on the edge of disaster, but the maneuver worked. With a final burst of speed, the human ship shot out of the whirlpool's grasp, finally escaping the no-go zone. Back on the observation deck, the alien scientists were dumbfounded. For them, survival had always meant caution, avoidance, meticulous planning. But humans, humans had a different kind of strength. They thrived not by controlling every variable, but by embracing the chaos, adapting to it, and somehow emerging victorious. In that moment, the Galactic Council scientists realized they weren't just observing a species adept at survival. They were witnessing a way of life that thrived on the unknown.
on challenges that seemed insurmountable. And for the first time, they questioned whether humanity's resilience was something to be feared or something to aspire to. As the human ship stabilized in safe space, the crew let out a collective sigh of relief. The near silence on the Galactic Council's observation deck was a stark contrast. The alien scientists remained transfixed, still grappling with the enormity of what they had just witnessed. Humans had faced dangers that the Council had long considered impassable, and had emerged not only alive, but seemingly invigorated. Their courage, their sheer refusal to yield to the forces of the universe, had left the aliens questioning everything they thought they knew. Captain Riley glanced around her ship, her expression a blend of exhaustion and satisfaction. Good work, everyone, she said with a weary smile. Guess that's another one for the books. Her crew laughed, exchanging knowing glances and muttering in agreement. It was clear that, for them, this mission wasn't just a triumph over the no-go zone. It was a testament to the unique way humans approach the universe. They hadn't just survived, they had thrived, leaning into danger and trusting in their own resilience. Back on the observation deck, Xylox's eyes were fixed on the screen, watching as the human crew celebrated. For the first time, he felt a pang of something unfamiliar, a mixture of awe and humility. Humans had done what his people would have deemed impossible, and they had done it with an ease that defied explanation. As he observed their camaraderie, their easy laughter in the face of near death, he began to understand something fundamental about them. They don't just see survival as an instinct, he murmured, almost to himself. To them, it's a way of life. They thrive on challenge, on unpredictability. Kryla, standing beside him, nodded slowly. She, too, had been shaken to her core. Perhaps, perhaps we've been too cautious, too willing to avoid danger in our quest for safety. Maybe we could learn something from them. A quiet debate broke out among the Council scientists. Some argued that humans were simply reckless, that their success was a fluke born from madness. But others, including Xylox and Kryla, felt differently. To them, humanity's adaptability, their ability to bend and mold to any situation, was something remarkable. They saw the strength in it, a resilience that went beyond the Council's rigid methods and protocols. As the human ship turned to leave the no-go zone, Xylox felt a surge of respect he hadn't expected. Humans, it seemed, had unlocked something within themselves that most species could only dream of, an ability to not just survive, but to thrive, even in the most inhospitable of places. The observation deck buzzed with new conversations, council members exchanging ideas and reflections they hadn't dared voice before. The human success had sparked something, a curiosity, a desire to reevaluate the Council's approach to survival and exploration. Perhaps they, too, could venture beyond their comfort zones, push past the boundaries they had so strictly defined. As the Council scientists watched the human ship disappear into the distance, a quiet resolve settled over the observation deck. Humanity's defiance of the impossible had left an indelible mark on the Council, challenging them to see survival not as the avoidance of danger, but as a test of courage, adaptability, and strength. In the end, the Galactic Council realized that they had witnessed more than a successful mission. They had witnessed a shift in perspective, a glimpse of what might be possible if they allowed themselves to embrace the unknown. And though their own journey would be different, they would carry the lesson of humanity's resilience with them, a beacon in the vast darkness of space. Months had passed since the human crew's daring mission through the no-go zone, yet the impact of their journey continued to ripple throughout the Galactic Council. In quiet meetings and heated discussions, the alien scientists revisited the concept of resilience, dissecting what they had witnessed and questioning their own understanding of survival. On the Council's observation deck, Xylox and Krela found themselves at the forefront of this philosophical shift. No longer content to merely observe, they began advocating for a new approach, one that embraced the unknown, that encouraged exploration beyond the Council's safe boundaries. They knew it was a radical idea, one that defied generations of careful, cautious tradition. But the memory of humanity's adaptability, their ability to confront danger with ingenuity and fearlessness, 
had sparked something they couldn't ignore. In one of these meetings, Creela presented a report recommending a human-inspired exploration initiative. It was a bold proposal, suggesting that teams undergo adaptability training, learn to operate with minimal resources, and adopt a mindset that prioritized innovation over strict adherence to protocol. Naturally, the suggestion was met with skepticism. The Council had always prided itself on its safety measures, its ability to control variables in a universe that often seemed uncontrollable. But as the debate continued, it became clear that not everyone viewed humanity's actions as reckless. Some saw the value in a new perspective, an openness to risk that could yield discoveries beyond what they had ever imagined. Slowly, minds began to change. The Council approved a pilot program, one that would allow a small team to train under principles inspired by the human's mission. They called it Project Frontier. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Captain Riley and her crew had returned to their routines, unaware of the philosophical revolution they had sparked. For them, the mission had been another successful venture, another chance to explore the boundaries of known space. If anything, it was a reminder of why they loved what they did, why humanity, for all its flaws and eccentricities, seemed uniquely equipped to face whatever the universe could throw at them. Back in the Council, the final memo on the human's mission arrived at the High Command's office. It was a simple note, devoid of the usual scientific jargon and technical analysis. Instead, it read, Recommendation for Galactic Council Policy Update. In cases of severe crisis, contact a human if all else fails. The Council members laughed, some nervously, some genuinely. And though the recommendation seemed almost absurd, there was a deeper truth to it. Humanity had shown them that sometimes survival required a bit of madness, a willingness to face chaos head-on and adapt faster than anyone thought possible. As Xylox and Krilla left the meeting that day, they exchanged a quiet, thoughtful look. The galaxy was vast, and there would always be dangers lurking in its depths. But now they faced the future with a renewed sense of purpose, a willingness to go beyond their own limits. In the end, humanity's legacy within the Galactic Council would not be one of recklessness, but of resilience. A reminder that, in the face of the unknown, courage and adaptability could transform even the most impossible challenges into new frontiers.